Hello, and thank you for joining me for this Epic Surf News update. I want to kick off this new segment with some surf art I came across on Saturday. This artist clearly puts her skills to work for the forces of good. And I'm going to give you a little story while we check these out. My story is about yesterday, Friday. The waves were really fun. I do have to admit that I got in rotation at the jetty in Oceanside and blew it. The waves were good, but they were not that consistent, so you had to wait for the right wave. Once the right wave did come, everybody in the lineup was watching that person do their thing. So my wave finally came, I mistimed the first turn, and lost the wave's energy and fell. So it's not exactly what you're seeing here in this clip. Uh, this is another thing that can happen to somebody who's too far behind the peak. But I think you guys get the idea of the overall fill. And so as I fell, I could hear all the gasps and moans from all the other locals and everybody who was waiting patiently for their wave. So I used a little etiquette and gave the rotation a break by sitting a little inside and aiming for the mid-sized waves. Uh, it can happen, as you can see here, it happened to a professional surfer, it can happen to a regular guy like me. But at the end of the day, it's all about having fun. So keep it real out there, because everybody coops it at some point. So back to Saturday, I headed up north to San Onofre State Beach to meet up with some friends at Old Man's. Good morning, this is Phil with Epic Surf News, here picking up some friends to take them surfing over at uh, Old Man's and uh, a couple spots over that way and they're camping over here at San Clemente State Campground. So got your old man that's super blown and south wind and super high tide. So uh, it doesn't look like I'm surfing. It looks like I'm gonna go wake everybody back up at the campsite and just hang out. Okay, so before I head back to the campground over at San Clemente, I'm gonna go check something out. My buddy was telling me that over at San Onofre, there's no overnight camping anymore uh, for part of the season, I guess part of this winter season. So I always used to come here at any point, any time. Uh, I'm gonna come validate that info right now. I'm sure he's right, but I just have to hear it for myself. <clears throat> so here we go, we're gonna about to pull up to the booth right now. Uh, there's no overnight camping. Not right now. Oh, is that every year, or how's that? Oh, wow. What's the, when does it start back up? Uh, before Memorial Day. And after Labor Day. Oh, wow. So, is there a reason why it's just hard to maintain it, or is there something happened? It's just not demand for it. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, and so the San Clemente one used to be full a lot, but off season there's usually more space over there. Yeah, the yeah boo. But okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Bye. So it is true. Now you know. Felipe wants to forget about that one. Watch this. Moving on to Sunday, December 17th, the Pipe Masters resumed with Ian Govea beating Philippe Toledo at Pipe. It was a round two heat, so Philippe was eliminated from the event. So that was a bit of an upset because Philippe was definitely a favorite for this comp. The good news is the Pipe Master continued and ran on Monday, December 18th. First things first, did you see the Gabriel Medina Kelly Slater drama? In this case, Medina had priority, but was hanging out down the line with the intent to block Kelly Slater if a wave came. Slater took off on a wave, got barreled, and pulled out to an abrupt end of this wave. Medina dropped in, didn't try to take the wave, he actually dropped straight and even turned back towards Slater. In my opinion, it was uncalled for. Medina could have just ridden the wave, but he was trying to get a two for one. He wanted to block Slater's wave, but also get a penalty on Slater if he could make it look like Slater hindered his score. The only problem is it was a dangerous tactic that could have injured one or both surfers. When you see similar tactics happening in free surfs, let's just say you wouldn't categorize the surfer who does this as a positive vibe warrior. So to counterbalance my opinion, uh, and to be fair, I heard people frowning on Kelly Slater's double shakas as bad sportsmanship. And I've heard other people say that Kelly Slater has done the same thing to other people in the past, which is probably also true. So there are differing opinions out there. 
Uh, you can let me know in the comments what you think and who you were rooting for if it was Medina or Slater in this heat. To be standing on the sand watching this go down, boys, what is going on in Milano? Back to you. Unbelievable. So a very interesting situation there. And this is going to be huge. You know, there's a, a lot to take in here. But Kelly Slater, deep in the barrel. The best takeoff we've seen him make in this event so far. He found the exit, Pete. Medina, he had priority. He wanted to block Kelly on that rod. He sure did. Surfer has priority with the right to take any wave they choose. Is there a hindrance of scoring potential? That's at the very bottom there. Is there a hindrance of scoring potential for Gabriel Medina there? I mean, that's up to the judges to make that call. Look at this late drop underneath it, completely barreled, and sees him coming down, and he steers at him. But there's also another rule, right? And that is when you've got priority, you can't sit down the line and take off on the wave to block someone and, and basically block the rod. It is to a point, but you do have priority. Um, I don't think this situation is going to play here. I mean, that's he has free reign to be where he wants. I mean, he can't. You can do it once, you know. You can't just do it again and again. But that is going to be a unique. I mean, they literally touched, right? So <laughs> that's amazing. So a little bit later, John John Florence ended up earning enough season points to win the 2017 World Tour Championship before the Pipe Masters event concluded. So congrats to John John Florence, he's been surfing amazing, uh, his surfing has matured, his whole game seems to have come together, and it seems like he is definitely going to be a top contender every season going forward. Uh, unfortunately, John John couldn't win the Pipe Masters event, it was Jeremy Flores that beat him out. Jeremy Flores was also surfing really well at this event, Jeremy tends to do really good at a lot of reef breaks and barrel breaks. Jeremy wasn't on my fantasy surf team, so I didn't get to reap any rewards from that. But uh, we have to say congrats to that. That was a good performance. And maybe John John was already a little overwhelmed with the season win. So uh, possibly that might have affected his performance. With all the awards being handed out, we can't forget Griffin Colapinto, who won the 2017 Triple Crown of Surfing. Griffin Colapinto had to charge at three Hawaiian surfing contests to win this title. My Pipe Master Fantasy Surfing picks were the worst in my league. I did pick John John for the win, but so did everybody else in my league. The Epic Surf News Fantasy Surfing Award for the Pipe Masters goes to Michelle. Michelle whooped us up and had a significant gap in points too. So congrats to Michelle. I will be setting up another league in 2018. So go to worldsurfleague.com, go to Fantasy Surfing from there, and then search us out, Epic Surf News, Pro Surf Blog, you'll find us. Uh, another way to get involved is to message me your email address on our Facebook page or on YouTube, and then I will go ahead and send you an invite to our league. So thanks everybody for viewing this Epic Surf News episode and be sure to put some comments about who you like in surfing, who you think is surfing well, who you think is not surfing that great uh, and let us know anything you thought about the Pipe Masters contest in the comments.